Well, if you're watching this video, then you made it through the first video, which was the story of Antoinette. I'm putting up two videos today because I really did want to share the story of Antoinette. And, I, you know, I went back and forth, especially when I edited it and saw that my dog Avery was even a little bit leery about what I was saying. I just, you know, I couldn't have paid enough money to get a trained dog to do that with his timing. It was just, it was surreal. And so I wanted to share that with you, partly because I think it's so cute, but also the story is so profound that the contrast between the humor that Avery added and what I was about ready to talk about is, I think, a big lesson in life. I think often our life is a mixture of the reverent with the irreverent. So what we're going to launch into today now is, is and, and on the blog, I take the story further. So I included what I read to you about Antoinette, but then I lead you into how I was first introduced to this spirit guide called Chief. Now, what became a, a, apparent to me was that Chief actually was the guardian angel of my father, and I had met Chief at the time of my father's passing. It took me a while to kind of put the two together, but in that next blog post, I depict that in the story. Today what I'm going to start is sharing with you the teachings or the initiations that Chief basically shared with me as I began working through this multidimensional experience. And it was really dealing with the layers of my soul. So I'm going to read to you the first teaching and then share with you some of the ways that you can apply it in your own life. And I will do this with all ten. The next ten days, this is what we're going to be doing. And again, this is on posted on the blog. Application of Chief's Teachings. Now these are woven into the story of Antoinette, which is the middle section of this book that we've talked about. The teachings Chief offered throughout my healing were profound and invaluable. I include them here with suggestions on how you can integrate them into your own life. My suggestions are just that. Allow yourself to sit with his words and your own unique application will emerge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the teaching and then we're going to do an EFT sequence that helps you begin to embody this. To revere the mother within you, you first need to learn how to revere the mother of our earth and find your sacred place where you can always return to for nourishment. Only then will you walk with the compassion in your heart necessary to be successful with such a healing. Now, the way that I experienced this was that Chief would summons me and I would be stirred to go into meditation and I always found myself in the same place. It was on Mount Tamalpais, which is one of the most sacred places on earth to me. And I would be in this meadow and I would be sitting cross-legged and Chief would appear and he would begin to talk to me about these teachings. So he would kind of say those statements and then there would be a discussion about these initiations. Whenever I start this work, even though I've got my lovebirds in the other room and I've isolated them, and I know the birds irritate some of you, but short of putting them outside, it's like they always get so talkative so you can hear them in the background. And I, I apologize for that, but there's nothing I can do about that. So let's look at how you can revere Mother Earth. The importance of that is that you need to have a place on her body on the planet that you feel safe. That's the way you integrate what you experience in all of these different areas of your healing and how you can integrate that into who you are in your day-to-day -day life. It doesn't do any good if in your meditations you experience all these healings, but you don't bring that into who you are in your day-to-day. -day. So that initiation taught me the importance of that. This EFT sequence is going to guide you through a possible way of you implementing that. The blog takes it into some other suggestions as well.
All right, so I invite you to join in. Even though I sometimes feel disconnected from this planet, whose earth I walk on every day. I want to come into alignment with Mother Earth. I want to develop a relationship with her. I want to be connected to her, heart and soul. So even though I have a tendency to ignore my connection to Mother Earth, I now choose to go on my nature walks, to go for a swim in her lakes, on the oceans, on her trails. I choose to relate to her as another being, as the mother of my soul. And I choose to do so now. I often ignore my connection to Mother Earth. Yet every aspect of my physical being comes from her womb. I now want to make that connection. Even if I'm hesitant or resistant, I take those parts of me and I neutralize that possible subconscious resistance to change. I do this while I'm walking on her belly, along her trails, on her beaches, in her mountains, all around. I go into nature. I find her stones. I find the remnants of her trees, a special leaf. They all have a story to tell. And each story relates to me. I choose to revere this mother as a stepping stone, to revere the mother voice within me. I find my place of safety. I know I can always return. And as I sit on her belly, I feel her heartbeat with my own. I come into alignment so that I am prepared to do the healing that is to be done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I encourage you, go on your nature walks. Find a stone that speaks to you. Take a soul step with Mother Earth and you will be so rewarded.